Now, of course, the most diverse cabinet in British history was always going to raise the ire of the hypocritical left, and boy, are they seething today. New PM Liz Truss selected her in a circle yesterday and made close ally Therese Coffey, her deputy and health secretary. And like mean little moths to a flame, the Be Kind Brigade piled on, mercilessly lambasting her for her personal appearance and even her weight. Today, when asked about the comments that she's too unhealthy to be in the role, the new health secretary brushed off the jibes. Well... My focus is on how we deliver for patients, and uh, I appreciate I may not uh, be the role model, uh, but I'm and sure that Chief I. Medical Officer and, and others, <laughs> Chief Medical Officer and others, I'm sure, will continue to uh, uh, be uh, role models in that regard, and I will do my best as well. But should someone who enjoys a smoke and a, and a, and a drink be the boss of the health service? I know I'd never get it. Well, I'm the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, and that's what I'll be focused on delivering. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll probably get all sorts of comments. Oh, poor Therese. Far more disturbing is the out-and-out racism, though, from the revolting race bakers on the left, like Dr Scholler, who claims the diverse cabinet containing not a single white man in any of the great offices is actually full of people supporting white supremacism. Yep. Follow me here. So this is what she tweeted. Kemi Badenoch and Suella Braverman are by their words and actions representation of the anti-woke. I expect nothing but divisive rhetoric, gaslighting and sabotage from these racial gatekeeping upholders of white supremacy. So, Adam Brooks, I'm sorry. To me, this is a bridge too far. It's disgusting. It is. It's absolutely disgusting. And it's out and out racist. She talks about divisive, re uh, dangerous rhetoric or divisive rhetoric. That, that is just that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mentioned to Dawn out the back, I really feel that using white supremacist uh, language like that and, uh, and, and, and dangerous rhetoric is putting MPs in danger. I think, you know, we've seen MPs lose their life from violence. It's comments like that that put them in even further danger and whip up hysteria, which isn't, you know, it shouldn't be there. Actually, it's also just factually wrong. I mean, how on earth can a total mad woman like Dr Scholler actually look at a cabinet which is more diverse than any other cabinet in British history, where literally the three great roles of state, you know, the, the Foreign Secretary, uh, the Home Secretary and the Chancellor are filled by ethnically diverse people. By the way, I don't think they're there because of their race for a single second or their ethnic diversity. I think they're there because they're going to be damn good at their jobs. But how on earth can she look at that and actually say white supremacy is just sick? Look, I don't really agree with her rhetoric. And by the way, I think what's brilliant about this cabinet is they always say that you have to see yourself in a role to believe that you can be it. So I hope that there are women, um, ethnic minorities, who look at this cabinet, regardless of their policies, and think, mm. wow, if they can do it, I can do it. And I think that's commendable. I think where people have concerns is that none of these people have spoken up for or through voting records have been champions of racial equality or female equality. And and obviously this is a white panel, so I can't speak about race, but what I can speak about is Why? issues I care about. Why can't you? Because it doesn't impact me. And I think the, the issue with diversity... I hate this. Hang on, it's not about box ticking. It's about ensuring that people... I, I love this country and I think we all need to be represented. Yeah, but we all no, also but have to be able to speak yeah, about what and we I will believe, speak, but what I'm no matter saying what our race is, no matter what our sexuality is. Lots of policies happen when people are underrepresented. So, for example, as a woman and as a mother... The four people who are going to have the biggest impact in this current cabinet are the Equalities Minister. And by the way, for a party and a leader who kept going on about knowing what a woman is, she's taken away the role of Minister of Women, which is terrifying. Jacob Rees-Mogg is the new business minister, the man who condemns flexible working and working from home as laziness. How despite, terrible. How terrible that there's a straight the fact, white man in the cabinet. I mean, who would have thought despite it? Despite the fact that 54,000 women are having to leave their jobs every single okay. year because of the cost okay. of childcare. Dawn, Dawn, the issue that I have, and, and by the way, I have this a lot personally because, you know, as a gay man, I don't fit the box of what the left in this country expect gay people to be like. Well, now we're not even allowed to say gay airways. LGBTQI+++++++. Plus, 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 plus. And of course I do. I say it. Of course I say it. But I'm not meant to. And what I feel, Dawn, is that 
the left in this country will only accept diversity, especially ethnic diversity, when it is representing the left. And actually, we have to move to a place where diversity is accepted, no matter what your politics. I, I think, yeah, I think you've, you've pretty much nailed it there. I mean, look, you were saying that, you know, everyone has a right to speak their opinion. I think Shola, who I work with regularly and I respect her, that's her opinion. She's entitled to her opinion. I'm not going to sink to the level of slinging insults here. However, I do think that the people on the left have a problem with anyone who's black or brown not subscribing to that woke victimhood yeah. playbook that the left think all black mm. and brown mm. people should. Indeed. And, and what Which about... I think is incredibly patronising, by yeah. the way. It's so patronising. Of course mm. it is. Well, what about this fat shaming of Therese Coffey? Does anyone think that's been acceptable today? I yeah. think it's absolutely outrageous and I think there's actually a lot of misogyny in there because if you look at previous um, health ministers, um, Matt Hancock, um, his, I can't remember... He's who quite he slim, though. No, but he talked off. about openly liking smoking. No one ever, ever talked about his no. health. And yet again, we are boiling down a female MP to her appearance rather than what she is mm. actually doing. I think there's lots to criticise her Although, for. Although, Adam, you but think her it could be hypocritical, though, right. with smoking. I, I don't agree with putting the pictures up and, um, you know, it's almost like online bullying. But I do think there's, there's government campaigns to lose weight for your health. There's government campaigns to stop smoking. I feel that she maybe should come out and say, you know what, I don't look like a, a picture of health, but do you know what, we expect you to try and get more, more healthy, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to be more healthy. That would be a good move from me. But, but no. why did no one criticise Matt Hancock when he openly um, showed that himself mm. smoking? That well, Dawn, fair enough, I, Dawn, for me, what the issue is actually is that if you go down this path, it's a really slippery slope. Because very soon, what you'll start saying is the education secretary has to have been a teacher. This is, the defence yeah. secretary yeah. has to have been yeah. in the army. The equalities yeah. minister has to have one arm. You know, where does it end? People I mean, can only do the jobs that they are as pure as the driven snow for. I mean, that is yeah. ridiculous. Because I mean, most of us wouldn't be doing the jobs we're doing currently in that situation. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it's very unfair that she's been. Criticized. It's identity politics. Ken, Ken Clark wasn't, you know, mm. didn't have any of this. But I do actually think it's quite good that we have a health minister who looks like she might be needing the NHS yeah. rather soon. But let, let's let's just also, they tax us for fast food. They tax people that smoke. Now the head the head of the health department should really well, I, come out and well, say... Look, I you don't know. think that's going to happen in this government, though, mm. because Liz Truss is, of course, uh, someone who doesn't believe in all of that nanny state stuff.